In this video, we're going to discuss the notion of absolute convergence and conditional convergence, and then we're going to do an example. So we say that an infinite sum, say A sub n, is absolutely convergent, or converges absolutely, so is absolutely convergent. If it converges in absolute value, so if you look at the infinite sum, and I'm purposely omitting the infinities here, and this converges. So if it converges absolutely, that means it converges in absolute value. So this is a definition, so it goes both ways. So absolute convergence means it converges in absolute value. The same series, or a series in general, is conditionally convergent, so conditionally convergent. There's all kinds of convergence in mathematics. This is these are just two examples. There's uniform convergence, there's pointwise convergence, all kinds of stuff. If well in this case the series itself should converge. So the sum of the a's converges, but it does not converge in absolute value. So this one diverges. And there is a fact or a proposition or a theorem. This can be proven. And it says that whenever you have absolute convergence, you have regular convergence. In other words, if your infinite sum converges. So if this converges, in other words, if your series is absolutely convergent, then the series converges in the regular sense as well. So absolute convergence is stronger than convergence. So whenever you have absolute convergence, you, you just have convergence in your good. Let's go ahead and do an example of a series where we determine if it's absolutely convergent, convergent, conditionally, or divergent. So let's try a classic example. It's just an easy problem. So here we go. n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times 1 over n. So this is uh, an infinite sum. And we're asked to find if it converges absolutely, conditionally, or diverges. So first of all, notice it is an alternating series. So we can use the alternating series test. So if you set a sub n equal to 1 over n, you can go through the motions of the alternating series test. The first condition in the alternating series test says that a sub n should be equal to 0 when you take the limit. The limit is equal to 0. By the way, in the alternating series test, a sub n is always the non-alternating part. So it's a little bit different from all of the other tests. So this is 0, so we're good. 2. The second condition is that a sub n is non-increasing. And it is. So a sub n is non-increasing. I'll just say it. In other words, it's decreasing or staying the same. This is clearly decreasing. The bigger n gets, the closer it gets to 0. So both of these are satisfied, so converges. So we know that this series actually converges. The question is, is it conditional or is it absolute? So in order to determine if it's absolute, we have to take the absolute value of our sum of this piece here. So negative 1 to the n times 1 over n. So this is equal to the infinite sum as n runs from 1 to infinity, when you take the absolute value of negative 1 to the n, the negative 1 to the n goes away, because you end up getting this. Let me show all the steps so you see it. And then so this piece here is just 1. The reason is, negative 1 to the n is one of two values. If it's 1, you get the absolute value of 1, which is 1. And if it's negative 1, you get the absolute value of negative 1, which is also 1. So in any case, you get 1. So we're left with 1 over n. And this diverges by the p-test. Since p 
is 1, which is less than or equal to 1. So it diverges in absolute value and converges in the regular sense. So this is an example of a conditionally convergent series. That would be the answer in this case. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care.